reconnaissance squadron now stationed on Guadalcanal has hung up an excellent record during the past months in supplying the fighter command, bomber command, and the naval and ground forces with the particular and valuable type of intelligence information that photo reconnaissance squadrons can obtain. Due credit in the record goes to the converted P-38, called the F-5, used exclusively by this squadron. Indispensable to the operation of this or any other outfit is an efficient ground crew, dependable men checking every detail. Testing the communication system, the radio man gets a line check from the squadron control station. A maintenance man is responsible for the condition of the cameras. Because of the extremely humid climate of the tropics, the cameras must be removed from the plane after every mission and taken to the camera tent for a complete check. There are very few problems that a good maintenance crew in a good squadron cannot overcome. The 17th Squadron is blessed with a mechanical genius and prominent club man who is the accredited field representative of everything. No matter how many letters after his name, they still spell laundry. He presides over a meeting of the Guadalcanal Washing and Clambake Association. His Rube Goldberg masterpiece, run by a small putt-putt and using a discarded Jeep transmission, not only solves the clothes washing problem, but turns a portable hand pump that carries water to a couple of discarded gasoline drums that drop the water that anoints the body beautiful. Over at the operations office, the pilots are alerted. They claim a good game of rummy keeps a man alert. Seen beyond them and sticking seriously to his job is the operations officer who never strays far from the telephone. Nearby is the operations board on which all missions are noted. There's a call for the operations officer. Information is desired concerning a certain area. He lists the data. Destination. Area to be flown, number of photos desired. Walking over to the board, the S3 calls the pilot, and they write in his name and mission. After this, the pilot is briefed. On the area map, the S3 points out the route. These are the Solomons, and the course will be an elliptical route from Guadalcanal covering the islands to the northwest and their adjacent waters. Particular information is desired about enemy activity at Buka Island, furthest west in the Solomon Group. The operations officer with additional information brought in from similar missions advises the pilot as to the best course and the spots where enemy ACAC and fighters will probably be encountered. The crew has been notified and the proper cameras and film made ready. The F-5 can accommodate five cameras. On this mission, two verticals and two obliques are used. You notice one of the boys is taking care of his 45. Except for a machete, that's all the armament these pilots carry on a mission. All armor and armament have been stripped from the plane to accommodate the cameras. The pilot's only protection is his speed and the F-5 is the fastest photo reconnaissance plane in action. General Twining, commanding officer of the 13th Air Force, has stated that the 17th photo reconnaissance has already paid for itself by relieving heavy bombardment aircraft from reconnaissance missions on which several such heavy aircraft have been lost. In comparison, only one F-5 has gone down in four months of daily reconnaissance flights. The last item before takeoff is the cleaning of all glass through which the cameras shoot. It will be noted that only one belly tank is being carried on this trip. It is preferable not to limit the plane's speed by taking along two tanks, though most pilots find the F-5 handles less well with one tank.
quickly as the chocks are shoved under the wheels, the men go up to remove the film magazine. No time will be lost in getting the film to the field lab and in rushing prints to the photo intelligence officer for interpretation. It is possible that one or more of these negatives holds information that is of life and death concern to every man in the Guadalcanal area. For photographs can show up things that the human eye cannot easily detect. At times, a whole fighter or bomber squadron will fly over an enemy installation and never see it. Furthermore, photos can be examined carefully with stereoscopes and by more than one person. They can be checked with other photos taken previously to catch minute changes in the arrangement of the terrain and to detect carefully camouflaged installations. Over the smooth boulevards of Guadalcanal, the magazines are rushed into the portable laboratory for development and printing. The pilot photographer's personal report rounds out the story given on these negatives. It covers points which can be more fully enlarged upon by verbal testimony. Sitting down with the S2 officer, he gives a minute account of everything that happened to him and everything that he observed. He reports that the weather was good all along the line and that he got good pictures of the shipping in the Shortland area. They walk over to the large map and he points out that he flew over these two islands to reach his objective at Tonalay. He saw two ships at Tonalay which he believes were merchantmen. There was also a destroyer over at Shortland Island and another large vessel, probably a transport, unloading. The S-2 officer, with a background of intelligence coming from dozens of other sources, puts this new information into a well-rounded picture of enemy activity over a large area. The S-2 officer in this instance is Captain Victor Dykes, a graduate of the Harrisburg School of Photo Interpretation. Organizing the intelligence which the pilot has brought in, he telephones Wing A2 and gives them a digest of the report. He adds that the pilot promises good photographs and they should be in their hands in a few minutes. Over at the lab, it has been 15 minutes from the time the plane touched the ground and there are the first prints coming out. A portable lab with men specially trained for field work has rushed these prints through with speed and care. The lab men give the photographs a preliminary check before sending them to wing A2. A half hour has elapsed from the time the pilot returned from his mission. Already a fighter squadron is rolling out to the runway ready to act upon the information obtained by photo reconnaissance. It may be that the photographs and the verbal report have disclosed that the enemy is open for attack at Tunnelay. Or perhaps it was discovered the Jap transports and destroyers are sneaking up the channel. So out our fighters and bombers roll, prepared to do a job that the alertness and efficiency of a good photo recon squadron has helped set up.